Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and this time we've got the pleasure of watching Crit 2000 playing in the Super Conqueror. Now Crit 2000 is playing on the Russian server and that's the only way that you would be able to see this tank today because this patch 9.20.1 is hitting the European server at least, I'm not sure about the North American server, but tomorrow. But the Russians always get things a little bit ahead of us, right? They've had the game since 2010. They always get their patches a day before Europe. And so going on to whatreplays.ru is a fantastic way to see how arguably the most experienced players of World of Tanks are playing in the brand new vehicles. Now the Super Conqueror. I haven't actually talked about this tank, at least on my YouTube channel, since it went through stage 2 testing on the test server. Now you all know if you've seen my preview on the vehicle, I thought it was kind of lackluster and my conclusion to the vehicle was that if you haven't got the FV215B yet, there's kind of more reason than ever to get your hands on it before it is removed from the game, at least on the European server tomorrow, you're never going to be able to get it again, unless Wargaming try and pull off some shenanigans, which I wouldn't put past them right guys. And so. The Super Conqueror in stage one of the testing was, was rather mediocre, it had kind of 7 degrees of gun depression, wow, and that's the same as the FV215B, it was a lot slower, it had way worse gun handling, so many statistics about the vehicle were just much worse than the FV215B that I don't think that the increased armour that this tank has, and boy does this thing have some frontal armour, all of these thick spaced armour plates welded over the vehicle, just kind of made up for the disparity between the Super Conqueror and the FV215B. However, in Stage 2, Wargaming put this tank through a dramatic series of changes. Firstly, dispersion when moving down by 25%, dispersion when turning the tank down by 25%, turret traverse dispersion down by 29%, reload changes from 6.45, which was probably just a little bit worse DPM than the 113, up to 6.9, the same rate of fire as the FV215B, which makes it one of the highest DPM heavy tanks in the game. Furthermore, Wargaming increased the depression of the vehicle. Maybe not so interesting on a map like Kharkiv to have 10 degrees of gun depression, but boy, I've seen some replays where this thing is just dominating ridgelines and with an impressive turret. The only thing that you've got to worry about with this vehicle is of course your turret ring, got to watch out for that, and I guess the kind of the, the, the Coppola slash viewport hatch on top of the vehicle, you've got to be careful with that. But when you're using those 10 degrees of gun depression, that weak point on the tank becomes a lot less prominent. So Cret took a big old hit from the E100 as we can see here. Hold on, let me just get my free camera to show you exactly where that went in. That went in, it, did that actually overmatch the upper hull of the Super Conqueror? Oh my word, I actually have to find this out right now as I'm doing this. That's got 44, oh, it did! This whole section of the tank on top has 44.5 millimeters. So of course the 150 millimeter main armament with armor piercing rounds of the tier 10 German Super Heavy is going to be able to overmatch this tank. Wow, definitely take that into consideration. If you're using 150 millimeter caliber gun plus, then you will be able to just shoot down onto the upper hull of the Super Conqueror to be able to penetrate it. So definitely you wanna be using as much of your gun depression as possible with this vehicle. Just look how this thing snaps the shots in and just check out the rate of fire. Now I'm, I'm sure that Kret probably has a very experienced crew in this tank, although he, he might not. Uh, that's a bit of a guesstimate. He does seem to be an experienced player. He's got the Object 260 as we can see there via the badges, all of those little icons. And if you're wondering what that badge is, if you've done any of the, the personal missions, which I guess is now going to be called the campaign in the next patch, then you're going to be able to, to show off that little badge. And I think each of the north, east, south, west, the little marks the, the little diamonds on that correspond to you having completed the Stug, the HTC, the T55A and then the one that I guess everybody wants to achieve right the Object 260 at least in the end. So Crit 2000 has pulled off 3000 damage here in the first four minutes of the game that's not that impressive really for a vehicle with such crazy DPM in fact the DPM of his tank with a gun rammer and a full crew will be about 3000 now we notice Kret ricochets around there off the lower plate of the E100, so he dabs that two key to have enough penetration to start to contest him. Now with the premium rounds on this tank, but the standard rounds are not bad, 259, but with premium you're pumping it up to 326, and so that means that the turret armor of the E100 is not great now. And that E100 just pushes forwards, looks like the E100 just auto-aimed at the front of the vehicle there. Yes, he manages to ricochet, I believe, off the upper hull there, didn't quite manage to catch it. But 
The job's done. Cret finishes off the 100. His friend finishes off the 260 as well. Lots and lots and lots of IS-7s on the enemy team, by the way, guys. Holy moly. But unfortunately, Cret loses his ammo rack and he doesn't have a repair kit. And so even though he's got a nice amount of depression to be able to work over this ridge here, if he wants to try and bump his tank up a little bit to try and hide some of that awful lower plate armor, he's going to struggle here. Wow, clutch shot into the T-1023. The T-1023 now decides to reverse instead of commit. Don't know what that T-1023 was thinking there. He probably could have committed and killed Kret, but instead he's going to allow even an Amaract Super Conqueror to be able to finish him off. Now you might be noticing that this IS-7 is just dominating Kret here. Yep, every single round going in through the lower plate and even managed to take the track off and also go in through the side of the vehicle there. That's not an overmatch there. The side armor on this tank is rather okay. We're talking about 101 millimeters down the side of the vehicle, so that's definitely not going to be overmatch worthy. But Kret face hugs the IS-7 into submission, fires down on his low plate, and look what this 113's thinking. Kret repairs his ammo rack. Look at that crazy rate of fire, guys. I'm sure that 113, which has n by no means bad DPM and fires, I believe, six rounds a minute with 440 alpha. It's a rather tasty DPM on that vehicle. Must have thought that Kret wouldn't have been managed to, uh, to reload there. And one thing I'd like to highlight is... Do you see that Kret's on 38 hit points right now? Oh, beautiful side scraping there against the IS-7. Another beautiful thing about the Super Conqueror is the fighting compartment, the side of the fighting compartment there, if you want to call it that, has been buffed significantly, which means that it can take a hit or two, unlike on the FE-215B. Although I think they might be buffing that on the FE-215B's HD model as well, but I'll have to, to check that as the vehicle does become HD. But one thing I'd like to highlight is Kret is on 38 hit points. Remember, Wargaming buffed the hit points of this vehicle by 50 between Stage 1 and Stage 2. If Kret hadn't received that buff, he would have died. And you might be wondering, how in hell's name does a tank with 400 alpha damage roll for 530 there? Well, that's because Kret 2000 was firing a Hesh round at the end of the game. Now, this is one of the specialities of the high-tier British vehicles, is they get monstrous high explosive rounds. Extra penetration, 120 millimeters of penetration, instead of the usual standard 60 that you would get with a 120 millimeter caliber gun. And that 515 alpha damage rolls slightly high to take out that tier 10 self propelled gun in a single shot at the end of the game. So while Kret 2000 undoubtedly struggled at the start of the game, that mid play and the end play was utterly fantastic. Now, this vehicle is going to be hitting the European server tomorrow, and a lot of people will be taking it out on the battlefield. And that's because it's being given as a replacement to everyone who has the FE215B. So unlike when Wargaming releases a, a whole new tech tree, uh, the only people who are going to be playing tier 10 tanks on the release date of a brand new tech tree are going to be those who have saved up 400,000, 500,000 free experience. On the other hand, this probably they're going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of people wanting to test this tomorrow. And so do expect it to flood the matchmaker for the next few days. So if you haven't watched my full tank preview on this vehicle, let me give you the quick 15 or 30 second version as to how to take this out effectively. Lower plate. The lower plate has no spaced armor. It's very weak and even angled like this, you're going to be able to go through it. If you're firing premium rounds with about 300 millimeters of penetration, you can bypass underneath the spaced armor and go through the turret ring. And as we saw here, if you have 150 millimeter caliber gun, the whole of the top of the tank is overmatchable. The top of the tank is kind of a weak point and it also isn't. Do you see how well angled it is? That means that if the Conqueror is using any of its gun depression, then all armor piercing and APCR rounds are going to be bouncing off this tank reliably. However, if you're firing heat with its 85 degrees of penetration, that sounds a bit weird to say that, but that's how the mechanics work in the game. You are going to be able to go through the Coppola very reliably indeed. However, one word of advice, unlike the Panzer 7 and the current FE215, 5B, the side of the vehicle here, when it side scrapes, is not a weak point. If you're fighting the Panzer 7 and it side scrapes out like this, you just shoot this whole area and it's easy to pen. On the Super Conqueror, this is actually 300 millimeters thick. Wargaming have specifically done this to allow it to side scrape. They chose to not make this a weak point, and so don't be baited into shooting it. My other tips for taking this vehicle out are to take advantage of its rather low alpha damage. 400 is not a lot, and pretty much all of the other tier 10 heavy tanks are going to be able to out-trade this tank if you can put one shot in for each time it 
fires. However, be careful because this thing fires 6.9 rounds a minute and it will easily be able to shoot you twice before you reload. And so punish it if it decides to come round the corner to put the second shot into you or pull back fast enough to make it overcommit into a bad position. So Cret 2000 scores an ace tanker on day one. That's not a surprise with 1,533 base experience points. He gets a high caliber for 7,307 damage dealt and a top gun for his seven kills. However, it looks like he resupplies some consumables, ammunition, and the repair cost, so he actually made a loss even with a premium account. And so Cret 2000 Spice Super Bell Shoy for uploading your replay on the whatreplays.ru website for us European plebs to enjoy. And after watching a bunch of Super Conqueror replays today, I can't wait to get my hands on this tank tomorrow and take it out for a spin. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Super Conqueror. Do you think it looks a little too good? Or do you think the second stage of the test server was some much needed buffs to the vehicle to make it relevant? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.